Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. June 22nd, 2024. Let's get into it. I guess the biggest story of the day for me was uh, Nigel Farage, F A R A G. He's the British uh, guy over in, uh, just won the election, and uh, I guess we'll find out July 4th where he goes in the uh, British Parliament, or the British House of Commons, excuse me. And uh, Trump said that Russia was provoked into attacking Ukraine. I mean, that is huge. Most Americans still believe that it was an unprovoked attack and Russia just came across. I just want to give you a little bit of background. It happened in 2014 when there was a coup, CIA... I shouldn't say sponsored Q. I watched a show today. All they do is, I mean, if there's not a cinder boiling underneath the, the, the cauldron, uh, you can't format a coup. Uh, of course, you can fund it. You can you can fan the flames, which is what the CIA did. And then, of course, everything panned out under Victoria Nuland and John McCain. But then you get up to, and I, this was something that somebody pointed out, and I thought, you know what? He's absolutely right. Because... The, there was 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers getting ready to invade the Donbass region because it was a civil war, okay? And the United States had pumped that army up with all of our weapons. Uh, and that was, in, what was it, February of 2022 when uh, Russia went in to, uh, and it was basically to save the Donbass region because uh, those were all Russian. They, they view them as Russian people and they had begged Russia to come to their aid and Russia had been giving them weapons, but not like the United States and NATO had. And so that was the reason that Russia went in was to defeat. Well, it wasn't a defeat. It was to distract that uh, 100,000 army because they would have rolled right over the Donbass and probably killed everybody. Um, and so uh, Putin felt he had no choice. If you recall, during the, uh, the Olympics, he went to China. I'm sure he talked to G about the whole thing. Uh, that was a couple weeks before the invasion took place. Just trying to give you a little bit of history, a little bit of historical background on kind of how all that stuff took place. But imagine if there was a 100,000-man army massed on the Mexican border getting ready to invade Texas. What would you do? What would you do? You know, I'm... I, I guess I'm, I'm a, I, you know, I hate to say it. I'm going to just say it. I, I am a Putin fan because I just think he's one smart dude, man. And uh, he, he just makes Biden look like a complete imbecile. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's done a lot of shit wrong. I mean, I, I think he's taken out some of his political opponents. He's a thug. He's a thug in a, in a, in a certain kind of way and uh, in things that he's done. But damn, if he doesn't look out for his country, I wish that we had leadership in the United States that looked out for our country. I mean, sometimes, you know, have you ever, you know, remember back in the uh, mafia days uh, when people uh, went along with the mafia, uh, uh, you know, the criminals, right? Because a lot of times they were given the people, you know, they were like... Um, uh, Robin Hood, you know, they were giving the people money, they were helping out the poor, and at the same time, they were uh, extorting businesses and doing things wrong. I'm just saying the world's not a perfect place. All right, so that was the big one. Uh, good Lord, this, this is a huge number. The uh, Russian Ministry of Defense posted that uh, last week, they killed, um, and this is just killed, I mean, well, casualties, I should say. This is uh, dead and wounded. 13,740 uh, Ukrainian soldiers. And they, everybody wants to say men, but I think there's a lot of women on the front lines right now fighting in Ukraine because uh, they're conscripting everybody. They're sending, they, if they, you got a little baby and he, he can, you know, maybe, uh, you know, six years old and he might be able to hold like, a, you know, a pop gun, they're sending them to the front lines. I mean, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course, but I think it's 18 to 60 right now. Holy shit. Moly, I can't believe the American people afford this this butchery that's taking place. I mean, Russia, you know, they're just conducting the war the way they got to conduct the war. You might say, well, you know, they killed 13,000 well, casualties. And by the way, this doesn't account for the uh, missile strikes into the country. Uh, so and that that probably kills a few people because Russia right now is methodically taking out the power grid. In Ukraine and Ukraine's down to like four to six hours of electricity uh, through most of their districts a day 
uh, and as Russia destroys that um, that infrastructure, and the way they're justifying that is, is uh, Ukraine has taken United States attack on missiles, and they've attacked the refineries and some of the oil. Uh, uh, I want to say oil fields, but it might just be the refineries in Russia. And so Russia's saying, well, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If they're going to strike our infrastructure inside Russia, the United States is, obviously, because, uh, you know, we're giving them the targeting information. I, you, you understand Ukraine can't launch those attackums without United States satellite and drone uh, targeting information. But anyway, so they, they're saying, you know, well, guess what? We'll, we'll go ahead and take out the electrical. Now, remember, the war's been going on for almost two or three years this is all a new development that Russia's taken out the infrastructure in Ukraine. And imagine what, I mean, I don't think the war is going to last that long. I think Russia is going to be coming across with a major uh, invasion. Uh, they've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of troops and all their equipment ready to go to just invade the rest of Ukraine and end the war. I think it's going to be over by, well, by the election for sure. That's just my opinion. But uh, anyway... So uh, that's how they're justifying this. So I'll just read you my notes. Uh, Russia continues to attack Ukrainian power grid. Ukrainian will freeze this winter. And that's, that was something else I wanted to point out. If, if it, the war did actually continue up into the winter, you, these people got no electricity. Can you imagine being 20 degrees below zero and you got no damn electricity? <laughs> Holy, I, hey, people in the Northeast, I, I think you know what that's like, right? And then, of course... Uh, Anyway, I said that was in retaliation. Well, this was an interesting statistic. Uh, one in ten attackums penetrate the Russian air defenses. But every Ishkander M uh, hits 100% of its targets. So for every missile that Russia launches hitting a Ukrainian target, uh, the power grid, uh, and they're going through the, the uh, United States Patriot batteries, which, by the way, we're sending more Patriot batteries to Ukraine, and we robbed Piper to pay Paul. Uh, they... They're stealing them from the NATO countries, and, and the United States is twisting their arm and saying, send your patriots to Ukraine. Uh, the patriots, have, you got to remember how patriots work, man. You know, the Russians will just flood those patriot batteries. I mean, you're sending up a $2 million missile to take out a $10,000 drone. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how that works, you know. But uh, anyway, um, so we were fighting World War II, and Russia's fighting World War III. I'm just going to tell you that right now. But only one in ten attackums actually make it to the Russian targets, which is why we're in not in a global thermal nuclear war at the moment. Russia has this new Fab 3,000 pound bomb. I mean, it, it weighs three metric tons, uh, so they can only mount one underneath the um, Su-34 uh, plane, and I think the 35, the Su-35 can carry it also. But I imagine they're just using the 34s with this. Uh, they do have to get in kind of close to the target, so if there are uh, air defenses, um, these planes, uh, to be able to drop that 3,000-pound uh, bomb, uh, and when I say that's, just to give you the, the numbers, that's 1.6 tons of explosives. <laughs> As a combat engineer in the Marine Corps, good God, I would have loved to have had 1.6 tons of explosives. I guarantee you I could have vaporized a bunch of stuff in the Mojave Desert. And I'm going to tell you what, you think a fireworks display looks impressive? I would have had a hell of a lot of fun. And I've given all my military uh, combat engineer war stories of when I was a combat engineer in the Marine Corps. Woo! 1.6 tons of explosive. I don't know, man. That's, uh, that's pretty damn impressive. But these weapons, uh, so you wonder, what, what do you need such a huge bomb for? Well, you know, the Ukrainians, uh, early on in the war, they were getting into this high-rise complex, especially in Bakhmut. I forget the Russian name of uh, and, and Andy Mamos. Anyway, what? Anyway, I call it Bakhmut. That was the Ukrainian name for it. But anyway, they'd be high in those high-rise buildings, and then the you, uh, the Russian troops were well, Wagner back then before uh, they went rogue, and you know now they've been integrated into, of course, the, U the Russian military, uh, and of course, Bergosian is dead. <laughs> Make of that what you will. I'm not sure how that all took place, but I. I, you know, I still think it probably was an, uh, an accident on the plane, but you never know. You know, Putin, like I said, he's a pretty ruthless dude when he needs to be. Um, so he, he might have taken that up. But anyway, they will be used against key infrastructure in Ukraine. And so if the Ukrainians are in an apartment building in the, in the future towns that uh, Russia's attacking, you hit it with one of these 3,000-pound palms, 
I mean, it's just going to be like the World Trade Center. It's going to take that whole damn apartment building down to the ground. So no more Ukrainian troops in apartment buildings anymore when they can hit them with these 3,000 pound, or the Fab 3,000, I shouldn't say, 1.6 tons. All right. I know I keep, I got, that number just blows my mind, doesn't it? <laughs> 1.6 tons. Holy shit. All right. All right. Let's see. Um, yeah, enemy strongholds and communications. Um, let's get into a couple of uh, little things that might help you out. I've been posting uh, on X uh, or people posting to me. I'm going to get into the bookmarks first. Uh, this was the first thing I thought really might help you out. This is from Peter Sweden, S-W-E-D-E-N. You can follow him on Twitter. Uh, he says, scientist, you know, by the way, I mean, I, don't feel bad. If you got hoodwinked into getting that, uh, uh, that uh, jab, I, I don't want to say more because, well, I'm already banned on the YouTube algorithm, but uh, if you got the jab, you know, you know that you're facing some myocarditis possible symptoms and uh, uh, people, or, or even blood clots. Uh, but he's saying that scientists have developed a way to possibly deactivate the COVID mRNA injections in people. And uh, this is from the McAuliffe Foundation. We have developed the first scientifically backed proposal to deactivate the COVID-19 mRNA injections in the human body. And you can find that on his, his feed. So I just want to help you out. I mean, if you, if you were hoodwinked into the getting shot, uh, luckily I didn't, but, uh, I tell you what, there was a hell of a lot of propaganda and people, I completely understand. This is Rand Paul, Dr. Fauci lied about the origins of COVID, avoided public scrutiny, hid evidence from the American people, engaged in the worst government cover up in modern history. It's time to hold him accountable for his role in the pandemic. Agree? Add your name to stand with me. Now I, I haven't added my name because it's just freaking useless. Uh, you got rhinos up there, and the Democrats all worship Fauci. Even the Democrats that, that aren't in Congress, they worship Fauci. Uh, that little freaking troll needs to go to jail, in my opinion. And I, I said that way back in 2000, when he was one popular individual. I told you he was an evil son of a bitch. All right, so let's just keep going. NATO is about to enter Ukraine. Uh, well, this, is, um, um, this was uh, Urban. Yeah, okay, I got it. This is Minister Urban. NATO is about to enter Ukraine. Hungary will not be part of this war, says Hung Hungarian P Prime Minister Viktor Orban. NATO will have a military mission in Ukraine in which Hungary will not participate, Prime Minister Orban said. In the media XOSUT, exit, he emphasized that a European train is going to war. According to his words, if the stars align well, you will be able to convince the driver and no one else will. He I'm not sure what that means. Somebody, <laughs> I'm just reading what he said. It pointed out that he had already agreed to the Secretary General NATO that Hungary will never leave. Well, Hungary will leave. And I guess he's saying he's going to leave the, uh, the NATO alliance rather than send Hungarian soldiers to uh, Ukraine. More power to him, man. That's a hell of a stand. This is Douglas McGregor. And uh, breaking unconfirmed reports indicate that the USS Theodore Roosevelt is streaming towards the Israel in the Mediterranean Sea. War with Hezbollah is now expected. Now, if you didn't follow my videos, I just did a video. It might have been the last video. And I, I was talking about the war with Hezbollah and how I felt it was, it was coming a lot closer. I don't want to say inevitable. Nothing in life is ever inevitable. But... I'm telling you, if I was on Las Vegas, I'd be taking odds right now that the United States and Israel are going to war with Hezbollah, and that could be the end of Israel. I'm going to tell you that right now. They got a hell of a lot of missiles in Hezbollah. Ah, uh, this is DC Dronco. Boy, I love this guy. Wait, and, and by the way, this 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 is unbelievable. The, uh, can you imagine what Trump faced in his uh, first presidency? I mean. Everybody was against him. The CIA was against him. 51 intelligence officials told every, the American people that the Hunter Biden laptop was fake. I mean, it, it just seems like the news just keeps coming out. I mean, the, the whole uh, Steele dossier was fake. You know, the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax that went on in MSDNC with Rachel Maddow for years was going on about how Trump, you know, was colluding with Russia. And it was all a lie. So many lies that we've discovered well, this was the next one. This blows my mind. Wait, 
Paul Ryan had the state dossier in his possession the entire time he was Speaker of the House and still let them lie about Trump's Russia collusion for years. Paul Ryan is no longer just a rhino. He is a traitor. It must be prosecuted as such. So let me just read you this. Uh, this is from Kosh Patel. Paul Ryan, as Speaker of the House, had in his possession the Steele dossier before uh, he had Devin Nunes and I launched the Russiagate investigation and never told us. Think, before anyone knew, before the fake intel, he had his own copy. He found it in my, on my own and then blew up the FBI slash DOJ. Why didn't he tell us his own damn, his own damn team? Paul Ryan's a Democrat. That's all I got to say. All right, let's just keep going. Ah, uh, this is it. South Korea to Russia. What are you? What, well, and this is uh, Mario Nafal, <laughs> Nafali, F-A-I. Uh, and it's, of course, WTF are you doing with Kim? South Korea's foreign minister summoned the Russian ambassador to protest the to street strategic. I already went over this in a previous video. The strategic partnership Putin signed with North Korea. They're now allies. If the United States attacks North Korea, Russia's coming to their defense. Just telling you, it's huge. And I'm not sure if China might be in there too. He called for Moscow to immediately stop its military cooperation with Pyongyang. I'm sure that, you know, Russia's going to go along with that. <laughs> Claiming it would violate UN Security Council resolutions and pose a threat to South security. Russian ambassador said he would uh, convey the soul's concerns to his superiors in Moscow. Can you imagine getting that lecture as a diplomat and you just got to kind of sit there and take it and you just go, well, I'll convey that to my superiors. And, and of course, they probably are laughing about it right now. Um, alternative news. Uh, Putin, we use nuclear weapons if we lose in Ukraine. Putin addressed the issue of Western powers raising the temperature of the Ukraine conflict through gradual acceleration. Apparently, they expect us to just get scared at some point. Russia will use nuclear weapons when statehood is threatened. Don't push us. We will kill billions of people around the world. Don't attempt to win a nuclear war. There will be no winners. And so there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of frightened. Are you? I don't know. It seems like the American people just don't care. Um... Shadow of Erzra, Archbishop Clerlo Maria Vigano has been summoned to the Vatican to be excommunicated by Pope Francis, the first uh, Jesuit pope. As seen in this video, he courageously spoke out against child trafficking. Sounds like good. He named individuals such as Hillary Clinton, John Podesta, and former editor of the Recount, Slade Schomer, S-H-O-S-O-H-M-E-R, I don't know who that is, who was arrested for child pornography. So far, sounds like a good dude to me, doesn't it? <laughs> I, mean, I don't understand why he's going to get excommunicated from the Catholic Church. If you're a Catholic, maybe you want to think about leaving the church. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. He went on to speak about how Jeffrey Epstein ran a blackmail operation on his island. Well, we all know that now. I mean, you know. Uh, of course, Bill Clinton went there. Good God, how many times? <laughs> that pedophile. Collecting evidence of well-known people committing heinous uh, ritual crimes against children while working for the Israeli Mossad. Archbishop Clerlo Maria Vigano also spoke out against the following. Now, I just want to list these for you because if you're a good Christian, maybe you're not. I mean, maybe you're for uh, 13,000 people dead because they're Slavics and you're a racist uh, dying in Ukraine. I'm not. Uh, and of course, I'm not for all the dead Palestinians. Uh, maybe you, uh, you're you for the Israelis exterminating the Palestinians. I'm not. But anyway, uh, he's a, he spoke out against the fallen. Stolen elections. Well, that's coming down the pike. Uh, COVID mad mandates. Corruption of the church. Israel killing civilians in Palestine and against the World Economic Forum. He is now being charged with denying the legitimacy of Pope Francis and breaking communion with him and having rejected the Second Vatican Council. So there you go. That was the next tweet. Ah, here's one, Gabe. I don't know who this is. Holy moly. 
Zelensky's militants just kidnapped a father in broad daylight, leaving his wife and little baby alone on the street. This is unbelievable. Why are leaders, leaders allowing this to happen? And this is kind of like all over X, but I'm going to tell you, th this isn't just the end of it. Uh, they ran a sting operation. They, were, they got a bunch of uh, uh, Ukrainian men who were trying to escape the country. They took their money. They shipped them all the way to the border, and then they put them all in cuffs and sent them to the front lines to die. Uh, but this is this is the video. Let me get back to the beginning here. Hold on. Well, there you go. I mean, I, I tell you what, I would want to live in a country where they grab me off the street and send me to the front lines to die, especially at thirteen thousand a week. But that's what Americans want. That's what the American people are all for. That's what the Christians are all about. I don't get it. You tell me. You tell me. This is uh, the next one. Uh, results of the peaceful Ukrainian summit. Field Marshal Shersky was given 45 days to organize and prepare a counter offensive in the Kirkhoff region. Now, this is kind of a rumor. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't see how in the hell they're going to run a counter offensive operation. Uh, and uh, I guess it was the Duran, they were talking about there's, the, they're going to send 50,000 troops one direction and 50,000 another. I don't even know where they're going to get the troops from because the Russians are killing them. Uh, but you, you could read, I mean, it's a long ass tweet. Uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. I'm going to get into a couple of my posts. You might want to read these uh, just because um, I, I think they're good posts. Um, so the first one was... Uh, the Democrats and the Rhinos are, well, that, yeah, that, that was, wait a minute, uh, continue sending. I don't know why that didn't get sent. All right, uh, send now. All right. I hope you are following along as the United States Democrat Empire must focus on how to suppress the American people. They have lost control of their worldwide ambition and control. Power is slipping from their control. This means you are their next target. I'm just talking about anybody that, that posts anything about uh, what they're doing. Uh, and, and by the way, I just let's just keep going. Uh, Eighty-one, and this was a, this was a good vote, good good one. Eighty-one million votes, my ass. Eighty-one million votes, my ass. And if Biden really got eighty-one million votes, we would see pro-Biden hats, shirts, and flags. And I posted that, uh, and then I, I went back and I also told you what you can do uh, in the coming election. There's two things. Number one, we need to purge the voter registration databases. Okay, they're getting corrupted right now, and the Democrats are registering illegal aliens in those databases using the Social Security system by giving them fake uh, Social Security numbers. And they're not U.S. citizens. They're not supposed to be allowed to get Social Security numbers, but this is what the Justice Department, the FBI, and the federal government are doing right now. And once they have a Social Security number, they can get into the voter rolls in all 50 states. The only thing we can do is petition our governors to purge those databases and then re-register all the voters with voter ID only. Now, I know the Democrat states aren't going to do this, but in the Republican states, we could do it. Of course, my worry is Texas is really a Democrat state. Greg Abbott is a, you can't even call him a rhino, he's a Democrat. You've got 1.4 million uh, illegal aliens that are going to vote in Texas. I think that state's going blue, and that's it. That's the end of the election. Trump, no way, gets elected. Just my opinion, That's uh, but that's where we're heading. And then the second thing is he can at least go in and try to watch the ballots. If, if, I mean, if you're there, I mean, we know what happened in the last election. The Democrats threw the Republicans out of the, the voting area, and they, they went like sheep. They didn't fight back and because uh, the Democrats were more violent, uh, especially up in Detroit. And, uh, and then they just ran the ballots right through the voting machines without the Republicans president. To, but if you're there, I mean, fight back, man. Stay in there and at least verify the signature on the ballot. Notice I don't say vote. The ballot. That's it for today's video. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.
Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down.